In Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine tells Anakin of a legend of a Sith Lord that had the ability to save those he loved from dying and even bring them back from death itself. He tells Anakin that this Lord of the Sith also revealed to his apprentice all that he had learned, implying that this apprentice, like his master, was able to achieve this ability. However, later in the film, after Anakin has pledged himself to the Sith, Palpatine tells him this power is only one that one has ever achieved, but that if they work together, they may be able to do the same. So this raises the question, did Palpatine really know how to save someone from death? To first answer this question, we must venture back to Plagueis himself. Could Plagueis actually save someone from death? The answer is actually yes. Plagueis conducted experiments on many life forms and actually achieved this on several occasions. We must also look at the validity of the claim that Plagueis taught Palpatine everything he knew. This statement is actually also true, but just because an individual learns of or is taught something does not make them a master of it. When Plagueis would bring subjects back from death, while the dark side of the force was heavily involved, it was not the primary means of doing so. What actually revived the subject was the midichlorians. The force itself had less to do with it. What Plagueis did was use the dark side to influence the midichlorians. What brought life was not the dark side itself, as the dark side is not a tool used to create, but rather one used to destroy, manipulate, or alter something. Thing. While Palpatine may have been a master of the dark side of the force, he was not one of the midichlorians like his late master was. Because of this, Palpatine was forced to find other means in which to elongate his life, means he would ultimately not share with his apprentice in Legends continuity. Instead of a permanent fix, Palpatine opted to look deep within Sith lore and discovered the ability of essence transfer, which does exactly what the name implies, transfers one's essence or soul from one body to another, and is an ancient Sith ritual conducted by Dark Lords for centuries. Ancient Sith such as Freed and Nad attempted this, and other Sith like Darth Vitiate achieved great success with the ability, even using it more than once. Palpatine, while knowledgeable with the midichlorians, never reached the level of his master, who literally dedicated the latter half of his life to studying and manipulating them. Palpatine instead, in Legends continuity, cloned himself and transferred his spirit into these cloned bodies after his original body was destroyed above Endor. However, Palpatine ran into a problem. At first, he was unable to pull his spirit all the way to his clones and was forced to conserve his power, barely holding on to life or at least some semblance of it for several years until he was able to contact and possess the body of one of his hands. Unfortunately for him, the power of his spirit was too much to be contained within this body and his hand eventually was driven insane by the sheer power of the dark side of the force that Palpatine's body held within him. Palpatine did however manage to reach one of his clone's bodies and transfer his spirit over. Palpatine then ran into another problem. Again, similar to the body of his hand, the sheer power was too much to control and the bodies of the clones began to deteriorate at a rapid pace. This did not yet concern Palpatine though, as he had masterminded a plan to destroy the Galactic Empire and form a Dark Empire in its place, using the dark side of the force to rule and eliminate the need for governors and moths, in a sense being everywhere and attempting to control everything. So, so, in a way, Palpatine did manage to return from the grave. In canon, Sidious and Vader also had plans to return from death, but they had not devoted the necessary time yet to do so. After the construction of the Death Star, however, they did have plans to further the research that Palpatine and his master began long ago, and potentially achieve eternal life. This passage comes from the canon Tarkin novel. The sooner the Death Star is completed, the sooner you, Vader, and I, Sidious, can devote ourselves to more pressing matters. Matters only you and I can investigate, and that have little to do with the Empire. Save for Sidious, no sentient being in close to 5,000 years had set foot in the Sith Shrine beneath the Imperial Palace. The room's excavation and restoration had been carried out by machines under the supervision of 114D. Even Vader was unaware of the shrine's existence. But it was here that they would one day work together the way Sidious and Plagueis had to coax the dark side of its final secrets. As powerful as the battle station might become, its real purpose was to serve as a tangible symbol and constant reminder of the power of the dark side, and to free Sidious from having to portray that part. Based off of these passages, they did want to continue their research and achieve what was once promised. I have a future video planned explaining what the full plan was, but this is the canon explanation as to why the two Sith did not further their research immediately. Following the rise of the Empire, the two Sith were preoccupied with running it and exterminating the remaining Jedi. Of course, if the Rebellion had not broken out and the Death Star remained intact, these two Dark Lords might have actually achieved eternal life through their pursuit of knowledge in the dark side of the Force. So those are the plans that Palpatine and Vader formulated to return from death and the differences between canon and Legends continuity. 
If you would like to be a part of the Daily Star Wars debates and discussions, join me on Twitter, at StupendousWave. If you have any Star Wars video ideas you would like to see explored or explained in future videos, please suggest them on Twitter or in the comment section below. If you feel this video deserves it, please leave a like, as it helps me out a great deal. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the Star Wars news and lore from the ancient times of the Star Wars mythos to the new installments of the franchise, and to become a living holocron today. As always, your viewership means the world. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.